Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brandon Shank, and welcome to the Brandon Shank Podcast. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Brandon Shank Podcast. Man, we got a, a podcast on the road today, a summer jam, summer fest, uh, special guest, my homeboy from Emmaus, Springfield, Missouri, Mike Butasey. Say what up, Mike. What's cooking, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> and as always, you got Corey in the corner representing from the beach. What's up? OBX, baby. O- OBX. This is a summer on the road series. I, I mean, know, we're right? taking a couple weeks off because uh, none of us have been around, but really because uh, we we're trying to uh, build some things into the podcast, and this is one of them, a mobile option. So uh, I'm actually at my house. Uh, my wife is not here. All my kids are. So I told the crew before we started, this could be go viral at any moment. We could have <laughs> a viral moment. So uh, hang in there. If you're watching, um, I'm rocking the Emmaus shirt today. Uh, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself, man? Uh, y'all are in for a treat. Let me say that. You're going to get a lot of one-liners that you'll want to write down. <laughs> <laughs> No, man. My name is Michael, uh, pastor here at uh, Emmaus Church in Springfield, Missouri. We got kind of a unique model in our church. We got a co-lead. Um, so both myself and uh, a dear friend of mine, Ron Vandiver, are the both the co-lead senior pastors of the church. And we're just loving the Lord, man, seeing what God's doing. So it's good. Used to work in the recovery field for a long time and was a banker, so I got a lot of weird experience. So we'll see, hey, what, we'll see what we bring to the bring to the cast today. A Long Island boy, Long Island boy, <laughs> born and bred. Yeah, Mets fan, Jets fan, Islanders heartbreak fan. fan, really heartbreak fan is what it is. Knicks fan. Yeah, unfortunately, it's it's rough. It's a rough run. I even I even sometimes remote for the net uh, roof for the Nets because they moved to Brooklyn, and it's like, oh, we finally got something to Brooklyn, and then it's like, man, they still. Or terrible. Like, it's just bad, man. It's bad. It's bad. Hey, me and Mike go way back, man. Went to college together. Really didn't kick it too much in school. We were on two different sides of the campus and really didn't have a lot. Of, we had we knew each other, but then we my wives worked together at Evangel University. Me and Mike used to play racquetball hours on end, shredding the six-pack. I remember we had racquetball matches that were so intense. We would just, like, lay down in the middle of the floor in the middle of the games. It would be like a 13-minute volley. Yeah, we were uh, like two Tasmanian devils running around. And we like, ran in. <laughs> Brandon literally kept, physically carried me off the racquetball court because I blew my knee out when I was playing. Like, straight up blew my left knee out. He hit the shot. If you ever play racquetball, it hit the back wall, and it didn't hit the ground, and it was going to hit the front wall, and I went to chase it, and I planted to hit it. And as soon as I planted it, I saw my knee pop out of place, and I fell on the ground. I was in horrible pain, and Brandon straight up pick, picked me up and carried me to his car. <laughs> It drove me back to where I was staying, and that's that's where I knew we were boys for life, man. That's, that's just that's what happens. That's, hey. That was the moment it codified the relationship. It was night night. I knew it. It was night night. It was bad, man. It was bad. It took me six months before I could like before I could even like jog. I mean, I was on crutches for three months. I would lay on my stomach at night. My wife would have to like move my leg back and forth to like stretch out the range of motion. Worst pain I ever felt in my life, man. It was bad. It was real so bad. The moral of the story is you don't want none of this on the racquetball court, people. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I've, I've won plenty of times, and I'm still I'm – <laughs> Michael still did win. We need, to, we need to bring it back, man. I would, I would love to take that on again. I would have to say our record is probably – my record against Michael is probably, I would say, somewhere around 538 to 538. Probably somewhere around there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a little low. <laughs> well, hey, man, let's. Uh, I want to tell everybody what we've been doing this summer. Uh, a little quick recap. Um, Corey, where you been, man? What's been going on with you, bro? Uh, well, like I said, I'm in OBX right now, so we're in uh, vacation mode. My kids are all out at the beach right now. I'm going to go join them here in about an hour and a half, even though Michael said this is going to be about like a three-and-a-half-hour podcast. So uh, I'm just I'm buckling in for yeah, we it. Yeah, got to keep it light. Me and Mike could go. <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah. How about you, Mike? What's been new, man? What's been happening in, the, in, in Missouri? You been hitting up that Bass Pro or what, bro? No, I don't. I don't hit up Bass Pro too much, man. Oh, you know how it is. On, that's man. like the tourist. That's the tourist. That's my happy spot. spot. I love going there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like it. I like it. It's not my thing. We did 5K with the family on Saturday, which was a lot of fun. Did it's called the Festival of the Ozarks, which was a good time. My daughter had two softball games last night and pictures, so that was. Dang exhausting to be really honest with you um and then my son went to camp first time he went to camp so since he's in sixth grade now he's going into seventh grade first time he did that it was awesome awesome time man he had a great time with the lord had some great notes 
Uh, families look, my wife has been traveling. She's works high up in team challenge. So she does a lot of te teaching and training for folks. So she's been traveling and hitting the road. So man, we've just been kicking it, man. We've just been spending time with the family and having a good time, man. It's been good. It's been real good. That's awesome, man. We just got back last night. I mean, this is fresh. I woke up, did a little work this morning, came right here. Uh, we've been on the road a couple weeks with baseball. My 10 year old was in States, um, and seven hours away and my 12 year old was in States seven hours away but they played like 40 minutes apart so oh, we took our gosh. rv down a couple weeks ago to my 10 year olds but then my wife and i had to leave because my wife had to fly to wheaton for her college classes so we came back i preached on a sunday took her to wheaton and then i went back down with my four boys because rylan they had lost so he came home my four boys and one of my other players we drove down last wednesday got the rv and then drove it up 50 minutes to the, the other location and we've been there the whole week for my 12 u state tournament but we ended up man it was disappointing we i'm i told you they were awesome man we had two uh we had an incredible district tournament ended up winning districts went to states and we went to states our bracket the way it works is there's four brackets and they have four teams each so the states ha state has 16 districts in the whole state so we were district eight we get there we were in the toughest bracket by far in the tournament i mean every team in our bracket would have been first or second at in a bracket in the tournament but anyway we had three teams in our bracket that went two and one Every team, every bracket had a team that went three and zero, one that went one and two, one that went two and one, and one that went zero and three. So it was pretty cut and dry. But our bracket had three teams at two and one, mm -hmm. and then so what it does is it goes to runs against. And so we had fifteen. The team behind us had twelve, and the team behind them had ten. So we got cut out. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, disappointing. Sorry. Yeah, it was yeah. devastating because on Sunday we had to win, and we beat a team that was in the finals last year on Sunday, six to two. I mean, we came out and just hit the ball. And uh, any, anyway, so Sunday night there was a game that was played and the cool thing was this the game that was played Ridgeview shout out to all the Ridgeview people out there um we went to that game to watch because they had to beat uh another team and dude they took them to the bottom of the six ended up losing by one if they would have beat them we would have been in or if that other team would have had some more runs against them we would have been in but Ridgeview played their hearts out these kids are making diving catches I mean the place was packed our fans are going nuts trying to cheer this team on it was just such a great experience with those kids in that community um and uh it was just a really cool experience. But anyway, so we ended up getting knocked out that night before the, the bracket play. But the teams that were in our bracket, one of them was in the championship yesterday. And the other one went to the semis. And so I was like, man, we know we should have been in that top. We should have been in the top. I think our team was probably the top four teams in that, in that tournament. Um, I think we could have won it had we gotten into Monday. So it was devastating. But, man, it's just the way it is, you know. I mean, I, there was coaches talking to me like, bro, we're so sorry, man. You're y'all's bracket. And I was like, dude. It stinks, but so I still Kelly can't Clarkson, look at the pictures. I'm frustrated, but Kelly whatever. Clarkson, Brandon, once said, what doesn't kill you <laughs> makes you stronger. Bro, so, I know. It's, it know? was tough. It was tough to chew on for sure. But, you know, our team came and balled out. We did what we had to do and just couldn't finish. So, um, But anyway, so that's my summer. But there is one thing that I thought was very interesting. I saw a place. Um, it was called Trader Jerry's. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> None of that food's healthy. It's all like super horrible for you. Like Trader Joe's, like good stuff. Like, hey, we, we have like we have like vegan salmon. We have like this nice salmon, but we pumped it up with goat fat. So, like, yeah. it's, it's where it needs to be. It's, it's the polar opposite of Trader Joe's. <laughs> Tommy tells me Trader Jerry was the original. That's all I want to say. Trader Jerry, we know was there before Trader Joe's. Trader Joe got the idea. <laughs> From Trader Jerry's. You walk in, it's just an empty room with a creepy dude standing there. He's like, what you need, man? You know, and he just like goes in the back room. He's just got everything. <laughs> Did you buy online? <laughs> Did you buy online? You don't even have online. <laughs> and they don't take so, cash. It's just straight up trades. They're yeah, like, exactly. Oh, you, want, you want chicken? Well, what you got? What you going to give me? <laughs> <laughs> so I never went in. I never went in. But, uh, you know. <laughs> You didn't go in. You missed the perfect opportunity, man. No, man. <laughs> I didn't go in, dude. I just couldn't do it. Oh, I was in a hurry. I was mad after that loss. I couldn't take it, man. That's for our team. I said, you know what stinks, bro? I said, y'all didn't lose out of the tournament. You won. You had a, a huge win, and you and we didn't get in. I said, but we we ended on a massive win. People were going crazy. People couldn't believe it, and then we didn't get in. But whatever. Well, winner, real winners. Go to Trader Jerry's. Yeah, seriously. That's why I didn't go, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know one thing? Uh, what This is something that's bothering me, all right? Something that's bothering me. You know when you're traveling on the highway 
and you see an exit sign and you need fuel, right? So I got my truck, I'm pulling the RV and I, you know, when it gets low, you like, you have very little time. Uh, and because you're pulling out RV, so you get like eight, 10 miles a gallon. So I'm like, all right, I'll pull off right here. I'm near Richmond. I pull off the exit has all these gas station signs. And then you pull off and it says like 1.6 miles. That should be illegal. Yeah. If there's something on a gas station sign, it should be 5.5 or less. Just saying. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, that's messed up because especially if you're like sucking fumes and you're like, this is it. This is the that's moment. I got to go here. Yeah. yeah I don't what do you think, Corey? I mean, you ever been in that situation, bro? You're like, come on, man. I ain't got a mile and a half to drive. This could be it. Uh, I don't know if I've really ever been in that situation. I've, <laughs> I've probably been in the situation where it's like, how many miles is the next rest stop? <laughs> I mean, yeah. How many miles? <laughs> I need that. I need to see that sign. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets there and it says rest area closed, next rest yeah. area 42 miles. Exactly. Oh, yeah, those are the words. Dude, that's the Pennsylvania Turnpike, man. You ever go on the Pennsylvania Turnpike? Oh. Like, if you don't stop, you got like 48 miles before the next thing. Yeah. Well, we stopped at one yesterday and the rest area was closed for re for construction, but they had outhouses, like not outhouses, but the little like porta johns outside. And so I was like, man, those things, you know, it's summer heat. Those things are blazing, all the summer travelers. It's just, mm -mm. that's probably the worst of the worst. And so people were coming in out of them, but then around the corner was those air conditioned, super nice trailer bathrooms. <laughs> I was like, how many people have gone in those Porter Johns not knowing on the other side? It's <laughs> luxury bathrooms with air conditioned. <laughs> oh, man. It's okay, Johnny. Just grin and bear it. Just hold your nose. <laughs> I was like, nah, bro. No, nah, I'm good. But the other side, we were, we were good. We hit the jackpot. Um, so when you guys think of. When you guys think of, I want to ask you this question because I like all the listeners out there. Let us know this week. Send it in. Let us know Instagram, Facebook, emails, whatever. I want to know. Well, particularly, let's do Instagram and Facebook. I want to know what is your favorite. Now, for y'all, what is your favorite comfort foods? You know, I'm mm. talking, it could be year round, but when you think of my comfort food, this is like my, when I'm, well, this is my go to when I need comfort and I don't care about calories. I want to know what is it that you guys love to eat? You want us to answer that, or is, is yeah? That I want everybody, but I want to know what y'all want, and then I want to know all those listening. Let us know which one you think. When you think of comfort food, you got me, Michael, and Corey. Which one are you saying? Yeah, that's that's my jam, or that's closest to my jam because I know mine. It's am a no-brainer. Am I allowed to say like steak and potatoes? That's why wouldn't you be? Yeah, okay. that's a great comfort right. food. That's my comfort food. <laughs> that's, that's an average comfort food. Yeah, that's average, but it's a comfort food. Hey. Brandon, what you got, man? What that's is what I'm it? What's your so. Thing? And I'll tell you this. So anytime I've been on like a long fast or anything, there's one thing I think of. It's the first thing I think of no matter what I want, no matter where I am, no matter how I'm feeling. There is one thing that brings me to a place of complete joy and jubilation knowing that the world is good and that we are all going to make it. And it is cheese fries from Outback. Oh, I don't wow. know what it is. I just can't – with that, that ranch they give you or that little spicy ranch, there's just – it is a food. I know it's not like a complete meal, but that is the number one comfort food for me. Cheese fries from Outback. Nothing better. Hmm. Well, I would say right now the hierarchy of what we've heard so far <laughs> is cheese fries in first. And in a distant fifth, even though there's only two options on the table, is steak and potatoes. I don't know how y'all are dissing steak to right now. I you gentlemen to the well, greatest it... comfort food. It is my number one sandwich. I have a hierarchy of sandwiches. Okay. And it is Let me guess. Can I guess? Yeah. Okay, Corey. Think of what? something from New York that the pastrami. No, oh. it's not pastrami. I love pastrami. Oh, okay. That's not a top three. It's, think of something Italian Gotta from be. Long Island, Corey. Gotta We're going to get them. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Nothing. Oh, sandwich. Is it like a French dip? Is French, French dip a lot? French <laughs> dip? Is it like no. a I hate French dip. open no. face roast beef sandwich? What a boring sandwich. It's like, here's some bread and some roast beef, and we he's don't gonna, know what to do with it. He's yeah. gonna, just going to take the gravy from the pan and put it on top of it. That's a I think it's sandwich. gross. He's going to yeah, say like gross. a fluffer That's nutter. A <laughs> First of all, it's a great sandwich, but it's not a top three sandwich. Okay. Right. So let me ask you this. How about this? How about uh, what is that? What is that sandwich, Corey, where they have like – it's like Swiss and something else. It's a, a New York sandwich. A Reuben? A Reuben? Yeah. Reuben. You are wrong. It is yeah. not a Reuben. It is not a Reuben. It's going to be simple, some... man. It's it's a chicken parm hero. Yeah, that's there is okay. Nothing, there is nothing like a great chicken parm with the fresh mozzarella on the Italian bread with the sesame seeds. You get them at most pizza shops. Bro, 
That is the best, man. And if you go back to New York, I'm like, that's the mission I'm on is to go get one of those. You know why I love that comfort food? Because it's carb on carb on cheese. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're talking comfort food, the dirtier, the better. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good, man. And it's something I can make. So I am like, not. Go ahead. It's something I can make. You know what I'm saying? So like when you're in the mood for it and you know it doesn't take a lot of ingredients, it's easy to put together, and it's just a killer. It's a killer well, sandwich. I will tell you all this. I am not a southern comfort food guy i'm not like a meatloaf i like meatloaf it's fine i like fried chicken it's fine but honestly it's not at all in my those things like like gravy and potatoes like that stuff i can take or leave i'm more of like i'd rather have like grilled chicken and spinach than that stuff that's just me that's my personal sure. preference like i like foods that are like lighter yeah. but i mean you know yeah. so i'm not really like a deep comfort food but i like to know what everybody thinks so yeah let us know this week let us know what your comfort food is let us know what your favorite comfort food is and who knows maybe we'll send one to your house <laughs> you never know you never know. all right so i have one question on the you ask for it segment here we go don't blame me you ask for it would you trade this was something somebody asked me so i wrote it on here because we're not you know we always we don't we may not always do these but this is something somebody asked me directly and i was like i gotta answer this because i knew old butase who's gonna be on here and as a jets fan he will be able to resonate with this probably more than commanders fans so it says would you trade 20 years of being the worst team or even just a really bad team for one super bowl win for your commanders absolutely yes <laughs> absolutely well that's not even a, i said that i told him when they asked me i said that's not even a good question i was like because i have had 20 years of bad i'll take one year i'm due if that's the case i am due <laughs> i mean how many teams with with the exception of dynasties are pulling in championships every three years four years it don't it don't happen yeah, you had a dynasty yeah. in new england you've got one brewing now with kansas city they're they're killing it oh but yeah dude, most teams man it's hard to put it's hard to put one championship in the in the uh in the case i would absolutely take 20 years of heartache i've lived it man yeah I've lived it. i'm ready man i'm ready for one that's what i have experienced <laughs> i'm telling you this i just got an email today for uh this they sent out to all season ticket holders for the commanders there's like this big thing at fedex this saturday fedex field to before um training camp starts like this big throwdown i'm like bro no i can't do it i just got back but I'm not I, – I think I think Washington's a sleeper team this year. I really do. I mean, I think we had a good quarterback. I think we're going to be good. I mean, last year we weren't trash. People act like we haven't won forever. I mean, we're right there. We just need that one little piece, man. I mean, defensively, I think we're going to be stout. We got a great running back, good receivers. I don't know. I think people are sleeping. But, you know, the Cowboys make all the money, so that's what everybody talks about. But it's everybody in the NFC about. East, we ain't scared of them. And the NFL is so tough, man, because, like, all the teams are really good. And most championships fall down to did your team stay healthy or did they get healthy right before the playoffs? Or do you have Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback? He's a, such a monster, man. And yeah. you're in Missouri, so you know how annoying it is to be out there and here. Because when I went to school out there, it was all about the St. Louis greatest show on turf. Yep. And now – Let me tell you what I don't like. Let me tell you what I don't like. Here let's hear it. You ready? This is – I'm being transparent with you. Okay? Let's go. What I don't like about Chiefs fans – and this is like maybe fifty percent of them. This Hold on, all you. In, hey, I was getting texts from people that live in Missouri over the last couple of weeks saying, "Hey, can't wait for the podcast to start back up." So, all you Missouri listeners that are out Listen, there, this is the you know where he lives, you know where here's, he works, here's, you know where I go to church, you know where he so, goes to church. Here's, here, here's my thing. Okay, I am is is Mahomes awesome? Yes. Is Kelsey? The best tight end in football, absolutely. Okay, is Andy Reid a great coach? He's a great coach. But when when they won their first Super Bowl, all I heard was, we're the greatest team ever to play. We're a dynasty. Patrick Mahomes is the best. He's a GOAT. Man, stop. You got one ring, and now you got two. Like, I get it. But, like, to do what Brady did, to do what the 49ers did, to do what the Cowboys did in the 80s and 90s, like, that's hard. Hey, please so, like, don't mention that name on this hard. podcast. We don't talk about Cowboys. We don't talk about All Cowboys. right, well, then yeah. what that it's team with the blue, the blue team in, in, in Texas. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, Still, like, just enjoy what you have, and you don't need to flaunt it. Just enjoy it. Like, that's all you got to well, do. Just enjoy it. And I have a Kansas City Chiefs fan on our staff at church. And I can tell you this. He, and, Corey, you can attest to this. He's actually – he is a very quiet Chiefs fan, but very confident. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if I had Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback, I would be too. 
No, but I he doesn't that. talk trash. And I don't know if it's because he's outnumbered here or if that's his personality. But he's a very competitive guy. But he doesn't talk trash about his team. He just he just represents. But, now, I don't mind the Chiefs because I only got one of them around me. Maybe a handful in the church. You know, good. listen, they're they're a great team. What I'm saying is, when you get running your mouth to me, a Jets fan, it's like, what did we ever do to you? You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, I had bro. to put up with Tom Brady for 20 years of my life. Like, I, I don't got the bandwidth to do this again with another I'm, team. Like, we don't even play you. We play you like once every two years. You like, know what's I, funny to me? I'll tell you what's funny to me about NFC East fans because I got tons of Eagles fans around me, tons of Dallas fans around me. Um, t- Giants fans, they're around us, but they're actually the least annoying. Believe that or not. Giants fans are actually least annoying. They're, they're actually the ones that be the first to compliment, man, Washington looks good. Or, and I feel like for me, if there's one team I will cheer for, hands down out of the East, it's the Giants. Because I loved when Eli was there. They were beating the brakes off of teams, and they were winning Super Bowls as the NFC East. That's the only NFC East team I cheer for in the Super Bowl is the Giants. Yeah. But I'll tell yeah, you this. Yeah. Eagles fans, Dallas fans, they're like, oh, who, what fan are you? I'm a Commanders fan. They're like, oh, like, we're not even worried about you. And I'm like, do you guys forget what happened to you last year when we played you, that undefeated season, and we smacked you in the teeth? Do you forget about that? Does, does, does Dallas continually forget how we kept them out of the playoffs? Do, the, do people tend to forget that we aren't trash? You know what I mean? We play good against NFC East teams. So it's just – it is, man. It is – around here, Eagles fans, the worst. <laughs> Dallas fans, they've been losing for so long. They're kind of getting, they're kind of falling into the groove that the commanders have been in. But Eagles fans, they got this Super Bowl, and then now it's just like, oh, Eagles, E A G L E S, Eagles. I'm like, dude, nobody you cares. Listen to me. You listen to me, Brandon. <laughs> Old Nick Mangold is going to tell you what's up. <laughs> <laughs> my mom got me this, and it's been sitting in my office forever. I love Nick Mangold. <laughs> Hang it up, man. I'm trying to find a spot for it, man. I don't know where to put it. <laughs> All right, so I, I do have a, I do have something that I'm, I'm wondering about that I want your guys' input on. So Ryland State Tournament was in a town that had a Civil War uh, graveyard. Okay, so I got to thinking, how much history could we discover if we would dig up graves? <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but listen, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Think about it. How much history is buried in the ground, but we won't dig it up out of respect? Like what kind of right? history? Like what yeah. Kind of history? Yeah. What are we talking about here? Who knows? Who knows <laughs> what what they were wearing? What kind of artifacts are in there? I don't know. Maybe national treasures a real thing. Yeah, but like the Civil War, we know that stuff because the Civil War is not that ancient. Yeah. Like Do you? Most, most history here in the United States that would be that's American history is pretty recent we've got a lot of information on that but like we do dig up graves that's how we found the pyramids that's how we found now, the now you're you're going to my point now ah, this is why yeah okay. this is pyramid, why. pyramid weren't tombs though yeah yes mm, yes no, no. yeah who's, who's buried in that who's, who's what's in the middle of a pyramid the main it's the main pyramids we, we still don't really know the purpose of the the big pyramids the ones at Giza? I'm going to figure it out, yeah. I don't think Let's they Google were considered that. tombs. Let's see what it is, but I'm pretty sure they've all got mummies in there, sarcophaguses. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying, though. You're playing to my point, and this is my point. It's respect to not dig it up. But once we don't know a grave is there, and we accidentally dig something up, and we find it, it's groundbreaking discovery. So if you dig a grave up when you know it's a grave... But when people are still connected to that person, well, then it's just morbid and, and disrespectful. But when you dig it up three, four hundred years from now and you stumbled on it or you're like, well, man, we found this grave. We're going to dig it up. Now you're a scientist and you're discovering things. Yeah, but so like, I'm really saying gonna be, like what's going to be in there? You know what I mean? Like the clothes are right. Who knows? Who knows? I, I grew up where I grew up. And I'm not saying we do this at all. I'm saying it's a – when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, they won't – we don't dig up graves to find stuff because it's respect. But you dig up a grave that was 400 years old. Now you've made a great discovery and you're on you know, USA Today. My point is – or whatever. My point <coughs> is I grew up – and behind my house um, behind, on this trail was the, the grave of the bodyguard of George Washington. So it was George Washington's bodyguard's mother. That's what it was. And it said to the mother of George Washington's bodyguard. And it was like this little headstone and footstone. And I was always like, man, I wonder what's in there. 
you know, as a kid, like, I wonder what's inside there. Like, it's if they probably buried... just like whatever clothes he was on. Like, anything that would be significant, I don't think he'd bury it there with him. Who knows? Maybe it's what treasure. What do you map. want to get buried with? You, t- you tell me. You want to get buried with with cheese fries from Outback? <laughs> no, help me. What do you want to get buried with? Honestly, honestly, just, just, just dust to dust, man. Sprinkle me. It's, well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't think, I think a, it, a grave in a traditional sense is probably not going to have anything super fancy in there. That's not necessarily like an heirloom or whatever. That stuff would be handed down to their family. I mean, that's a sack of bones and clothes and whatever you know, whatever clothes. I'm not they saying have. you're wrong. But I'm not saying you're right. I mean, what are you, are you advocating right? that we dig up all? No, the just not to at make all. Sure. <laughs> not at all. That's no. why I'm saying. I just think it's interesting yeah. how we don't do it because of respect, but then when we do it hundreds of years later, it's a discovery. That's all I'm saying. It's just a little bit of a well, yeah. Where I'm I like, I don't really that's... get it. I think you reach a certain time and we're like, well, we really don't know how these people lived. And so that's why we exhume. Agreed. But yeah. yeah, um, In the pyramids, not confirmed to be tombs. So just letting you know. But we know, right? But we know. (laughs) We think you know. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not advocating anything. I would just had a thought of, man, it's so interesting that now it's disrespectful, but in hundreds of years, it's discovery. That's all I was saying. That's it. Yeah. Context, right? So, like, it's if context. you know the people, yeah. it's your boy up. ain't digging nothing up. I don't even. I don't. Even, yeah. I'm not digging anything up. So for me, it don't matter. <laughs> um. <laughs> so I, I read this article. I read this article on a blog, and I was curious what you guys thought. And it was a Kerry Newhoff post. Um. And he was talking about situations that say more about your character than you think. And he named nine of them. I'm going to give you a couple because I was curious about what you guys may have thought when I read this article. And I don't know if maybe you read it, but. It said, this is how you really tell what kind of character you have. And as I read them, I was like, you know, it's it's true because I think it's really easy for us to, if you're with anybody for a long period of time, over time, they'll show you what they really are. Mm-hmm. Like, we know that. But when you're by yourself and the way you respond to particular things, you kind of see the reality of maybe what that what that situation may be. And so situations that say more about your character than what you think. One was what you think, and this is, this one isn't as bad for me, but it says what you think when someone takes your parking spot. And for me, that's not as much tension as like somebody ticks you off on a road, like cuts you off, or I don't know, you're pulling a giant RV and they cut you off thinking you can just hit the brakes in a second, you know, random stuff. <laughs> what do y'all think? You've been what, tested? Well, what do you mean your character? Like, I've never had a parking spot. Do you know what I mean? So like, who- no aside spot. I've, ne- I've never in my life had an assigned spot. So like, well, I'm I saying, well, if you're the grocery store and somebody cuts you off and they cut yeah, you off, your that's, spot. that's what you mean. If someone gets to that's that spot about. before you, you, you're you eyeing it up, you see it. Or you get there and, and you're heading. You maybe you're the first one in the lane, but it's all the way down the other end of the lane and someone mm. pulls in and quickly pulls into that spot. Yeah. What do you do, Corey? What do I do? I just go find another spot. I don't really, I'm not, uh, I guess I shouldn't <laughs> say that chill. I. I guess I shouldn't say that I don't sometimes get road rage. I, I, that those things don't bug me. What bugs me sometimes honestly is cause I'm not even a, like go like I'll go five miles per hour over the speed limit. So I'm not even like a super speeder okay. either. It's just the people that just go really slow, like really slow. That's In the left a, lane. Yeah. That's the people where I'm like, all right, let's come on. You're 10 under here. Let's, let's go with the flow of traffic at least. But yeah, I don't really yeah. get much road rage. Mikey- Mike, you're a New Yorker, man. I absolutely know <laughs> New Yorkers are different. Yeah. And Mike used to drive a hoopty, bro. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I drove an 83 Cutlass. And I, got I don't even know if that's it. an appropriate term. I just know that growing up, hoopties meant big cars. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Like like full-size cars, like massive Buicks or Cadillacs. Boats. That's what a hoopty meant. Yeah. If it means something else, I'll go ahead and apologize in advance. I have no idea. That's what it meant. Yeah. I don't have any negative connotation to that, and everybody called my car a hoopty, so like it is what it is. <laughs> so, the, yeah, uh, Mike, that's that's kind of like Mike's MO, though, man. He he looks good in one. If y'all ain't watching the video version, click on it, and you'll see. Mike is the Italian that looks great in a hoopty. That's what's up, man. Yeah, that's actually – uh, what my name means. Michael means looks good in hoopty. It's a, it's I'm sure eating a chicken Latin. farm. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, while I eat it, man, my left my left hand it's out the window. Uh, you know, my right hand, I've got the sandwich, and I drive my car with my knee. You know, that's there you go. With those big like boat steering yeah. wheels. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do it. Uh, so you're not yeah. turning and into I, a, and I'm bumping, you're not even like a system in it. And, yeah, it's bumping. You know, the music. You're bumping. not even turning into know, a man. parking spot. 
No, 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 no. I, I drive straight into it. I push the other cars out of the way is what I do. I do it. I don't know what it's like to not get a parking spot because I just literally physically push the cars out of the way. Yeah. No, I don't know, man. I don't feel like – dude, I'm in Missouri now. So, like, that doesn't happen a whole lot. People, like, cutting people off to get spots. But out east, dude, it's like you saw it. It's a race. Like, it's just what it is. It's just, like, whoever gets it, gets it. And, and sometimes you give them a thumbs up, like, bro, that was good driving, man. Dude, let, me tell you, me. let me tell you this. This, this is a real story, okay? There was a time that we took a mission trip with some some people into New York. I was with my boy Wes. I don't know. You remember Wes, right, uh, Brandon? Oh, yeah. So we were driving, and Wes was, Wes was driving. We were at this spot in the city where, like, there's four lanes all going one way, okay? If you're in the left lane, it, it ends. Like, all four lanes are ending, okay? We're in this weird intersection. We're in the left lane. If we go left, we're going to be so far away from where we need to be. The next lane was like a bridge. The next lane would have rerouted us to a tunnel or whatever it was, and then – all the way on the right is where we need to be. And we're in, you know, Manhattan traffic. It's absolutely insane. So we're driving and there's a cop on the corner. And I looked at Wes. I was like, bro, we got to get all the way to the other side. We got to get to the right lane. And we have like, you know, like the 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 space we've got is shrinking as, as time goes. We're in a van. He goes, we're just going. We cut through three lanes of traffic and made it over. And the cop looked at us, shook his head, and just gave us a thumbs up. And we just kept going. So, like, that's just kind of what it is. Like, yeah, this is, Corey, you said it. It's like a weird respect thing. It's like, hey, well, that was pretty cool. You pulled that off. Like, good for you. You deserve that spot. I'm going to go find somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, one, that, that one doesn't bother me a whole lot, you know. Well, how about this one? How do you react to slow internet? Mm, I'm not about it. I feel it. like this will tick Corey off more than a parking spot. Because you're, yeah. you're, you're a creative and a production guy. And so yeah. slow internet, I feel like, can be the one thing to maybe get you, man. Yeah, and I, I got that gigabyte speed at home. So there's times sometimes you're out and about, and you're like, I could just go home and do this way faster. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you, you've been grainy this whole podcast today. Well, I mean, no, Michael, you're happens. coming in clear. I look clear on mine. Well, don't remember. I'm at the beach. <laughs> I'm at a beach house right now. That's what I'm saying. So. I'm, that's what I'm saying. You you said you got that gig, but I'm saying you're at the beach right now, yeah. and this might well, be something that's testing you, this yeah. slow internet. Well, actually, to me, because you look great. So, uh, to me, I guess shout out to to Riverside FM, which is this new mobile podcast thing we're doing. It's gonna look grainy to you, but the back end recording is gonna be crystal clear. So, Let's so go. all the pieces well, that I like need are gonna be awesome. Yeah. So, listeners, viewers, know. you guys are gonna get really good quality stuff. But uh. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, slow internet. That, that, that probably, I probably don't have road rage. I have internet rage, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you guys the amount of times Corey and I have been somewhere and he pulls up speeds on his phone and on his laptop and he's looking at things and he's finding out download speeds. And I'm like, bro, what is all this? And he's like, yeah, I'm just figuring all this out, blah, blah. And before you know it, we're operating at a speed of light. Hey, you got to find it's the best place, you know, especially we're, mo we're mobile church. And so, you know, we use these little Verizon LTE things just to live stream from. And so you've got to find the best spot for that modem. You get, it's got to pick people up. People really have speed. no idea what it takes to. Yeah. People have no idea what it takes to get those, that video live and clear every yeah. week from high school. Yeah. From, from, but from, I mean, we do it and we, from sometimes from speeds that can drop down to like three megabytes a second. So, <laughs> which yeah, give people an of... idea of what that's like. Oh, it's that's give nothing. people an idea that's, of what that's like. That's crawling at that point. I mean, you're not it's doing like anything. That's like that's like <laughs> I don't even. I mean, I would imagine satellite internet is better than that nowadays. But back in the day, I mean, ten years ago, satellite internet was like 1.5 meg, and it's like the worst thing ever. So you can get 5G. 5G is now what like a up to 150 megabytes a second i mm. think is kind of like 5g speeds but where we are at the at the school there you're, we're not pulling 5g well, so <clears throat> well let me ask you guys this because i think this is one when it talks about um talking about your character i think this is one that's probably really impactful for a lot of people and i mean those those are all relative i think it's part personality part if you're from new york or dc because i'm the same way mike when somebody gets a spot i'm like bro that was smooth you're a little bit of a sucker but that was smooth you know Game, game you, recognizes game at that point. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Game recognizes game. Yeah. So the one part about characters, and this is the one that I think I struggle the most with, is what you tell yourself when you make a mistake. I struggle a lot with this. And it's not just because I expect everything to be perfect all the time. And that's absolutely a, um, a character flaw is that 
it's not that I'm even a perfectionist, but I want things to be done right all the time. And in my own life, I don't, I don't expect that from, I expect that from myself. Like I, I was devastated. We didn't win the Little League World Series because I was like, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, like it's, it's like, there's an expectation for me that when I make a mistake, I have so much trouble. I'm like, well, you know, the things I say to myself, I would never say to other people. Um, and this is probably a deep one for a lot of people, man, where they legitimately have trouble realizing how special they are, how much they're valued and how, how great they are as a human, because we just so hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, failure is going to come, you know, I mean, nobody does everything perfect all the time. And, um, there's all sorts of books and songs written on just processes that you have to grow through. And that process, you know, teaches you and trains you and does all these things. Um, but yeah, there is this kind of echo chamber in your mind, isn't there? Of I wasn't good enough. I didn't do the things um, that I needed to do. And I think there's there's a lot of I think a lot of people carry a lot more trauma and hurt than anybody's willing to admit or acknowledge. For sure. Um, I heard one time somebody or even know, or even yeah, know. yeah, or sometimes you don't know something. You know, we we dealt a lot with grief when we worked in the recovery field, and grief is this weird thing because you you know it, it's you have all these uh, steps right: denial, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. And it's not necessarily like an order that you go through those things in. They can be different for everybody. But what people don't fully understand is you can accept a situation, you can accept a circumstance, and then something can trigger you back into that cycle, okay? So, like, let's just say you had an abusive uh, family member in your life, and they wore a certain perfume or cologne, right, whatever it would be. And 20 years ago, you've accepted whatever's happened. And acceptance is not like everything's cool. Acceptance is like, I, I understand what happened. I'm moving on. I'm not going to let that control me. And you're in the grocery store and somebody passes by you and you catch a whiff of that perfume or cologne that can like bring you back to that place. So I think a lot of times we hear things that come in our ears and they hit our brain and we start putting our identity and hope and trust in what these other people think about us. We think, are people going to think that I let them down? Are people going to think differently of me because I didn't hit a home run every time to just use a baseball example? And I think we have to guard our guard ourselves so that what goes in here in our ears and hits our brain doesn't root in our hearts, because I think that's where that all comes from. And I think that that it all comes out of insecurity. You know, like why why do we take ourselves so seriously and why do we hold ourselves to a standard that we wouldn't hold somebody else to? You know, there's a Jordan Peterson. I'm not like the biggest fan of him. He's 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 OK. But he has one of his rules for life is and I'm paraphrasing here. It's treat yourself like you would treat your dog, which is crazy. Right. But he gave all this statistics That's and all awesome. this data on how most people who have an animal, if they get sick, they'll make sure the animal gets all the medication. They make sure they get groomed all the right times, make sure they get all the shots. But we don't put that care that we put into somebody else into ourselves, you know. And then there's this stigma and all this stuff of like, we, we expect people to live in a perfect world. And then what happens? We take it out on other people who don't live up to that, you know, same level that we can't ever attain to. So it's this like weird vicious cycle that I think we have to learn to give ourselves a little bit of grace, the way that we would give grace to other people and chalk some stuff up to learning experiences. You know, my favorite people to be around are like older men and women who have like tons of life experience and just drop knowledge on you like all day where they're like, Hey, I messed that stuff up too. When I was your age, here's what I learned, you know? Yeah. And I think most people don't really want to hear that stuff. You know, most people want to do it on their own. So I do think Brandon, I don't know that it speaks more to our character if we hit ourselves harder, if we screw up, but I think it speaks more to there's some unresolved stuff in our souls and in our minds and hearts that we've got to figure out. And maybe those moments are helping you direct that conversation. You know, does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah, so for sure. It's tough, man. And I mean, who doesn't carry something around? You know what I mean? Everybody carries something around. I mean, there's times that I've been upset with something or something I did that was wrong. Maybe. And my wife is like, Hey, what's this really about? You know, like what's really going on? And she's great. And like helps me kind of unpack and process like, okay, what really is happening? Is this, am I frustrated at something else? And this is just a thing that's, uh, putting light to it or is there really something else going on? And, and this is not about this. Like this is actually about that. You know, um, and then we got to figure out what that that is and, and work through. It. And I will tell you this, the times I have worked through those things and I've put like my finger on what those things are, I feel I've responded much better in my own failure um, in, in times that I have failed. Then again, just like a task or whatever, it didn't get something done because I'm realizing kind of where like it, it's not that big of a deal. Like most most of our things outside of 
moral and monetary failures, some of those failures are not really that big of a deal. They're just, I forgot to do something at the time I said I was going to do it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I understand that. I think people just got to take, I think people have to have grace for themselves, but the only way you're going to ever find grace is if you receive God's grace. You know, you can't give grace that you haven't received. And that's one yeah. thing people, you, you, you're, you can look at other people and say, man, but they have this, they have that, but you won't be able to receive what God has. If you can't receive what God has for you, you're going to have a hard time accepting it for others. And what I mean by that is what we can, what we can receive from God and understand the value in it is easier to reciprocate. But when you're like, oh, you know, they're so much better than me. That's not really grace. Grace is, grace is saying, man, I, I know that God is faithful in my life and that he's, he's got great things for me and that no matter what mistakes I've made or what I regret, uh, he's faithful. And when, when you see other people's lives, what I've learned is that in my life, I've had a lot more grace for myself when I've received grace from God and I'm a, and I'm not judgmental of others because I realized, dude, what God's done in my life, goodness, like there's nothing that they can do that will push them away from him unless they just don't want to be with him. You know what I mean? So I think there is a uh, give and take there, you know, where when you as a human can receive grace in your life that you are human, you're flawed, you made mistakes, big deal. That's what Jesus died for, you know? Um, that it does. And I think that these things, when it talks about character, um, I think that's a, a thing where honestly, when you, when you hate yourself and you don't love what God's created and, and it's not about all oh, self-love, no, it's about God's love, you know, and really instilling that. I think that it's, this is my biggest struggle in life is the way I, I think of myself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one chapter away from finishing my dissertation for my doctorate. I do my oral presentation next month. My, the, and, uh, I, I've done great in it, but I told Casey the other day, I'm like, sometimes you feel like you just were selfish for doing it. You're selfish for wanting to get your doctorate. And she's like, did God tell you to? I was like, yeah. And it was exactly what he told me to do. But you just feel like, well, I've taken so much time for my family or, I mean, I haven't, I've done, honestly, I do it. I have it scheduled out to where I don't do it in the evenings. It's always <clears> my work day. But all that to say, that's just one example of me in my life where, you know, you're doing this thing. It's a big accomplishment. And I always said, I'm never going to just do things at the expense of my kids, but like I'm coaching all my kids. You know, I just got voted in as a president of our little league. And I was like, I, I, I'm trying to be as involved with their lives as I can. Cause nowhere does a parent ever say, I wish I had spent less time with my kids. So I'm fully invested there. But every time I do anything for myself, even things I know God told me to do, I feel a lot of shame and it's something I've had to work through. And yeah, is it deeper? Absolutely. It's value. It's, um, but I think that there's a lot of people who are listening that feel the same way that no matter what you do, it's just never good enough. It's always that you could have done better or that you did it at somebody else's expense. But like, you know what I mean? but where does that come from? You know, like who said that? Me. You know, and that's, yeah, and it came from me where it came from. Probably, Probably a lot of things, trauma, childhood PTSD, past sexual abuse, value, feeling used, all those things. And, and, uh, and so it's, I think for a lot of people, we feel like, well, there's a point you just don't struggle with it. But no, I think it's a point where you learn how to live through it and you gain, you, you grow in it and you overcome those things. I mean, you know, you deal with kids, you, you know, you were dealing with kids with life altering addictions that were coming oh, yeah. to the center and yeah. you would say sexual abuse is a part of a lot of their struggle. At yeah. some point, most of these kids had sexual abuse, um, and so there's, there, there, you don't ever just forget about it, you know? And I right. think that people need to realize like, Hey, when you're walking through stuff in your life, um, how you feel towards yourself actually does have a lot to do with mental health. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, and that, that's that grief stuff, right. That I'm talking about. So like it's, it, you have to be aware of how it can come, how it can appear again. Right. Because one of the stages of grief is anger and most people don't recognize that, but like you get angry, you get frustrated. That's real. Yeah. So you can. So Anne Lamont had a quote where she talks about grief, where she says, like, hitting acceptance is like having a bad knee where there's days the knee is great. But then there's days that it rains and your knee hurts really bad. But you learn to dance despite the pain. So like in that self-worth type of conversation, and this is for anybody that's, that's listening, like if you're one, if your identity is not rooted in Christ, you're going to have a difficult time understanding freedom. Impossible. Uh, letting these things go. Yeah, like it's, it's impossible. It is, right? Yep. It's, it's really hard to understand that stuff because whatever love you feel like you're experiencing and acceptance you're experiencing from anybody, it's pales in comparison to what it can be with the creator of all things. Um, but then when you're dealing with someone who is a believer, right, who 
when something comes up, it's it's this constant looking of I want to be good enough. I want to be known. I want to be accepted. Like we, we had a thing that I would talk to in the recovery field, like guys who or gals that have been through recovery as adults and then get big positions and big titles and all this kind of stuff. They have this kind of like mom look at me syndrome where they feel like they have to push and catch up because they feel like I know deep down inside, they feel like I've screwed so many things up. I got to make things right. And there could be people who have been, Brandon, like you're saying, like people who have been abused or whatever. Sometimes they feel like, well, I caused this. I created this. Like, no, you didn't. Like, especially if you're a kid, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You didn't have control over that. Like somebody abused you. That person did that to you. That's what that is. So I fully recognize and understand like those things can come up and they can still shape and always be in the background of everything that we do. But until we like recognize what that is and when it shows its face again, you have to go, oh, wait a minute. I know what that is. And then you have to deal with it again, right? So the goal would be in that grief cycle to learn how to process those things. It's not like speed's not the answer. So that's not like the way that I'm trying to word this. I hope you guys understand that. It's like, but you you learn to process those things as what they are. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Something kind of hit me and I need a minute, right? So yeah. I'll, I'll give you this example. A couple, like this is almost a year ago. Ron came up my office. He's the other co-lead pastor. And he was asking me a question. And he just mentioned the name Pierce. And this is a kid who I love. And he overdosed at about 23. Um, and he was trying to go get help and he died. Um, and that had been a few years before that. And he just mentioned this this guy's name. And bro, I lost it. Like I started weeping. And I thought that I was through that. I thought that I had experienced those things. And clearly, like it, no matter how well you feel like you really get through something, it's still there. It's still a scar. It's still a wound. It's, it still exists. So like when those things rear their head, you just have to learn to process those things. And sometimes I think the Lord is saying, Hey, you can't do it on your own. You got to bring me into that process. Like, let me help you bring healing to these things, you know? Uh, and the, I have seen people who have allowed the Lord into those processes who have had good godly mentors, counselors, all that stuff around them. Um, it, it's not that you're perfect in it, right? Because I think as men, we like to make things games. We want to conquer things, but it's a reality of like, this is, this is, this is what I have to deal with now. Right. So like I ran some marathons and after that I have compartment syndrome in my calves. It hurts real bad. If I run like more than a mile, they, they tighten up. It's, it's real painful. That's what happens to me too. So I don't run. That's I have compartment syndrome. <laughs> You know, but I've just I've learned how to navigate that where it's like, OK, I'm going to play basketball or I'm going to play tennis. I have to adjust what I do. And there's just I, that's a reality. Like the only way that I can fix that is with surgery. And I really don't want to go through surgery because I don't plan on running another marathon. Yeah, running ain't worth it. Running ain't worth it. it. Don't do that. Yeah. Does that does that make sense? You know yeah, what I mean? Well, I think, too, there's levels of infection when we have grief that like you'll just – I feel like once I would just sit around and cry when I was going through stuff and I felt like the Lord was like, Brand, this is just different levels of infection that's being pushed on and an infection's coming out and it's helping you deal with it. So like sometimes it'd be years later, but it's just a different level of infection. It's like a boil for the lack of better terms. Yeah. That as you push down harder, it comes out. It may be longer. I mean, you know. Well and, and stuff takes time to heal, right? Like if you've ever been sick, if you've ever had an a injury, long time. Yeah, it takes time, man. Some of it's not years, overnight. Lifetimes. And, and, yeah. and there's illnesses that are lifetime illnesses, like somebody who's got asthma might have it their whole life you know what i mean yeah. and like it's just well, like you know yeah i think we have this thing it, 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 a lot of times we think with god too that well god will free me from it well i don't think that's the best case scenario i think the best case scenario is that you remember it but when you remember it it's it's a memory of god's faithfulness and not a, a tragedy that took your life or that tried to destroy you you know it's a memory that man god this thing now used to be a trigger but now it's a reminder of how faithful god is yeah. And I mean, if and God's word is clear, he's going to use all things that for his good. So it's not that he wanted you to go through those things, right? That's like the mm -hmm. problem of pain, the problem of sin. You have these Absolutely. conversations. Well, if God's good, then why do people go through bad things? You know, I mean, as a believer, I can point that back towards, I, I understand we have free will and people do some horrific things, but like, yeah, you have this opportunity to allow the Lord into something and then see how he's going to use it. Like I got a friend who's been through all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, my buddy Roger, and he was sharing with me, he got to go into, into a maximum security prison a couple months ago, and he's only allowed in there because of what he's been through in life. And he was far from the Lord, and the Lord brought him home, and then he led worship services and led guys to Jesus. And he said, it was this is maximum security. This is murderers. This is everybody that you can think of. 
And he said not one of them made an excuse for why they were there, but every one of them were willing to repent of what they did and encounter a holy God. And when we encounter Christ, right, I think, Brandon, I think you're right what you're saying. Like, yeah, sometimes the Lord heals. But, like, God often doesn't take us away from our earthly consequences and situations, but he works with them, right? There's eternal reward. Sure, we get to look forward to that. But there's earthly consequences that sometimes we deal with if we're the offender. And then earthly consequences is not necessarily a bad thing. There's baggage that, like, comes with just trauma and things like that. And who doesn't have that stuff? You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody has it. No one's perfect, and the promise is not it's perfect here on this earth, right? I mean, I, I hate the book title, Your Best Life Now, because it's not supposed to be now. It's supposed to be later, and these are the these are the devastating things that we have to walk through. And I think as much as it breaks our heart, I think it breaks God's heart, because it yeah. was never meant to be this way. Oh, like, yeah. It was supposed to be this covenant relationship, and I think we could shake our fists at the Lord, or we could look towards the hope of when he returns, it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's, like, it's going to be the way it's supposed to be. You know, so these are moments that we are allowed, if if we take these times, we can allow them to draw us closer to the Lord, despite the pain and despite the heartache, to know that we're not perfect. Um, we need to dig into the Lord, and then let's see what fruit comes out of that, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Corey, you got any insight, man? Shoot. I don't, you guys, I know loaded. You guys have covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys, you guys took it. You covered it really, really well. Um. um well, final thought. Here's my final thought. A couple weeks ago, I was, uh, I don't, it's not that I don't get sick, but like my whole family had pink eye and my parents got it. A bunch of people, got, and I never got it. They're like, I don't know how you didn't get it. I, I can just, tell you, Brandon, I know why you didn't get it. <laughs> tell me. There's sin in the camp. There's sin. <laughs> exactly. You're the only one that's living right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but it's not that I don't get sick, but like I usually don't get like the, the, you know, the viral or bacterial infections or it's just, I just have never, even as a kid, like I, I, I'm usually, I'm a puker like every 10 years, maybe, you know, if that, so it's just like, that's just kind of my, and it's not that I won't get sick. Not that, you know, after you say this, whatever, you know, maybe tomorrow's my day, but I don't next get week, sick. Next week, the podcast is canceled because Brandon's, <laughs> Brandon's <laughs> Yeah, I'm out. So it was like a couple weeks ago, man. My, I don't know what it was, man. I was at night. I was, I woke up at like three in the morning and it, I was like, man, my stomach just hurts. It wasn't like any, it was like, I just don't feel good, bro. And I was like, this isn't like sick. It's like a, a feeling like I never had. I never really got sick or anything, but I felt like trash. So um, the next day, you know, just kind of made it through it. I didn't have fever. It didn't feel like that. Like my body felt fine. It was just my stomach was hurting. Like I swallowed a bunch of nails and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, man, this is something ain't right. Well, the next day I'm scrolling through my news feed and it was like, these things have been recalled from, <laughs> from Walmart. And it was like this particular package. And I don't even remember what it was that I ate. It was like a vegetables or something. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Like we shop Walmart all the time. So this ain't a shout against Walmart. This is just saying it was the one who, I mean, you carry all those products they carry. I guess eventually you're going to have Anywhere. Something. Yeah. It was like this particular brand and this particular thing. It was the same exact thing that I ate. And I was like, oh my gosh. And Casey, I was like, babe, is this this thing? She's like, Yep. I was like, I've never had food poisoning, but and I think it was a, they were saying people were like potentially dying and it was like a day later. And, uh, you know, I was like, bro, that's a close one. That was a close tap right there. You, you know, I feel like I, never. Wow. My body works kind of like a giant machine. It just tears things up and then, you know, takes care of business, bro. It's just like, no, this is sends out the troops, gets all the right. bad stuff, you know, I, never Wendy throw up. I, Wendy and I years ago had food poisoning at the same time. And like I was crawling into the bathroom to throw up, and then as I was crawling out, she was crawling into the bathroom. Bro, there is never a time that you're sick where you're just like, "Lord, end it now." Then when you're throwing up, it is. Have you ever had? Have you ever had food poisoning, Corey? Uh, once, yeah. Oh, yeah. How was it? Uh, it was pretty bad. bad. Or like, yeah, I did. I did throw up once. Yeah, but it was a man. It was a yeah. long time ago. Bro, I woke up at like three in the morning. Yeah. And I didn't know, like, I woke up at three in the morning and my stomach just hurt. I was like, bro, this isn't mm -hmm. like you ate too much or this is like a different hurt. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but yeah, man, I was like, it was like that moment when you scroll through and you see the thing that you ate. You're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but man, we still here. We still talking about it. Um, uh, but anyway, Hey Mike, thank you so much for being with us today, man. You know, Mike's one of my closest friends, uh, we used to do everything together. Now we don't, we don't get to do everything together because we're halfway across the country from each other. But one of my closest friends, my closest uh, confidants, and I uh, love you, bro. Appreciate you spending time with us today, man.
Anytime, man. Love you guys. Yeah. Hey, well, for all y'all, the blog is up and running. BrandonShank.com. Go to the blog. Uh, I'm going to post this week. It's been a, probably about 10 days, which I don't like to go that long, but it's something we just started a couple weeks ago, and we've already gotten a lot of great feedback. I'm glad it's ministering to you. It's a place that you guys can go and hopefully – uh, know that um, it's really just a online journal is more than anything. So it's not even meant to be academic as much as it's just meant to kind of open up life and, and share with you guys as much as we can from every angle. So we love you. So grateful for you. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for each and every listener, each and every person. God, we're grateful. You are the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we stop in this moment. We surrender to you and we just declare that you are everything and more that you promised to be. And we are so grateful. We love you and we thank you. And everybody said, amen. We love y'all. See you later.